Hello again. Uh, welcome back to CS170 for the fall session. Uh, we're on the third week of our lectures. Um, I did a quick intro in the in the prior video clip. Just gonna step back through this again. So let me come back down here. You can see modules. We're on to week three. So I'll bring that up. All right, so again, here's the textbook. Here's the chapters we're covering, four, three, and five. So for this lecture, I'm gonna run through these points right here uh, and point to some resources uh, and talk a little bit more about the editors. Um, and then we'll have subsequent uh, lectures or video clips for these others here. Um, here's more of these video resources. They should be similar to what we actually mentioned in the in the PowerPoint I'm going to go through. Um, here's different types of vocabulary you should be looking at, your textbook, and here's what we should be looking at from a recitation standpoint. Okay. So other thing I wanted to just come back to um, modules We have some references that are available you should pay attention to. So if you scroll past all these weeks here, you'll see HTML resources, and then later on we'll be doing stuff with JavaScript resources. Um, and then of course later on at the end we'll be doing Excel resources. Um, so when you look at these reference sheets, let's say the HTML uh, reference sheet uh, or the HTML GUI sheet, um, this is really just uh, a reference that you should be referring to as you uh, try to work through the assignments. Now, when you look at what's available to you, there's actually much more than what we're showing here. Uh, but I think it just makes things easier from, uh, from a class standpoint for us to uh, teach and just to make sure that uh, you are following along with uh, what we're teaching. You know, we're actually utilizing a much more simpler and basic um, uh, set of tools or, or commands um, which will be highlighted in these things here okay uh, and I'll kind of show you a little bit of that when I get to the HTML editor uh, also you want to avoid trying to do too many things that are outside of what we're teaching number one it raises red flags when we do our exam grading uh, and it makes things uh, a bit easier to uh, work with. I, I, most of you probably do not have a computer science background. Um, once you start stepping into things that we're not teaching in class to get things done, uh, inevitably it's probably going to raise questions um, and uh, logistically in terms of like the TAs myself uh, trying to answer questions for the class, uh, we'd rather keep it more narrowly focused on the basics uh, which would achieve our teaching goals for the whole class. Um, now, if people want to do some extra things on the side uh, for their own self-interest um, or self-development, uh, that's fine. Uh, we can go through that. Uh, but just remember in the context of the class, how we do our assignments, how we respond to the uh, essays, uh, the, uh, the long questions or answers, um, or the assignments, exams, and so on. Uh, please stick to uh, what's been shown in class uh, in terms of how to achieve things. Uh, it will just make things a lot simpler <coughs> from a grading standpoint and from a teaching standpoint. Okay, so just wanted to make that quick mention to you. Um, and you don't have to feel like you have to do all these fancy uh, extra functions. Just stick to the basics that we're showing here. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back to where we were last time. <clears throat> so I basically went through HTML, CSS, uh, talked about HTML5. Um, you know, I mentioned like this editor here, uh, which I'll go through a little bit later on. Um, and I also mentioned that probably your TAs will probably use something like VS Code, uh, just because it's used in other classes at Rutgers. Um, and you know, obviously it's uh, a little bit stronger, uh, more more complex things, uh, whatnot. Uh, I think for what we're doing with HTML, this is something basic. You can use it, and it, it works. Uh, anywhere works on MacBook, uh, works on uh, PCs. Uh, so something you may want to consider. 
Uh, if you feel that you want to use VS Code, you're welcome to use that also. Um, and your TAs will kind of go into that a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> so when we look at, uh, again, when we look at different things that we can do with HTML, um, at its most basic level, you're doing a lot of formatting with it. Uh, when you get into things like HTML5, like what we're talking about, it can probably do a little bit more than that. Uh, we're probably not going to cover much of that within this class. Uh, again, that's more of an extra learning type of thing. We can do more sophisticated things. Uh, we're going to try to stick to the basics here uh, just to get your feet wet for this class. Okay, so, you know, we're talking about the uh, HTML, how it describes a web page, um, and uh, basically some of the advantages. Uh, this talks about uh, basic information, uh, how much you want to transmit, um, how uh, instead of having something fully formed um, at the server level, it basically it redistributes the processing. Uh, from an efficiency standpoint, if you're thinking about things working uh, on the internet, uh, on on your mobile, um, there's probably certain degrees of like uh, bandwidth that you might have. Uh, in some cases, you have constrained bandwidths. Um, maybe you have certain types of uh, platforms. So it's important to have things that uh, can do what they call interoperate across multiple platforms, um, and also. Uh, do things in an efficient manner from a distributed uh, computing standpoint. Uh, so one of the ideas um, for uh, HTML is this idea of uh, formatting with tags. Okay, uh, and I'll I'll go through that with you in a second. Um, so you have these different tags that, in combination around, let's say mostly text, uh, it'll tell you what to do. Uh, with certain things uh, on the web page, how to display it, um, you know, just like a, what you can imagine in an editor. You can do any number of things. You can create new paragraphs, new lines, you can create tables, um, and stuff like that, and I'll, I'll kind of go to that in a second. Um, so you have this tag, this is a title, uh, basically it talks about the title of the page, um, and uh, you have an element that's the content between the tags here uh, and don't worry too much about this right now I'm going to step into the uh, page here okay so this is an important concept you want to try to remember this one uh, again we're going to show it to you uh, it's not like you have to sit there and totally memorize it um, it's going to be in your reference page uh, that I alluded to before uh, so don't really worry about memorizing it but understand like when we talk about what are required elements, what does that mean? Okay, so this standard tells you that this is HTML. Um, everything between here and here is HTML. Later on, you'll see something for JavaScript that will say kind of a, a script section there. Um, this thing here, uh, we have a little highlight here saying this is nice to have. Um, so the background on this is that uh, when you say car set UTF-8, I don't know if uh, you remember from one of the prior lectures we talked about ASCII uh, and we talked about like how some of the character sets that we defined uh, in the early days was more focused uh, for English essentially, uh, Latin uh, alphabet. Um, so with UTF-8, uh, you're just basically saying that it's a, it's a wider character set uh, and most uh, situations uh, if you don't have this, it will basically say uh, use this and understand this this character set. Uh, but there are situations where they may not. Um, so even though it's only a small percentage, just to make sure uh, you have complete coverage on uh, understanding your browser, understanding the character set, you want to put this in here. Okay. Uh, so. I would say it's actually more than nice to have. You really do want to have this, right? Although probably 90% of the time you can get away with it uh, without it. 10% uh, of the time you may have a problem. So you might as well just say this is mandatory. You want to have this, okay? So all this is just to define uh, what is the character set that you're using uh, for the browser, okay? Um, 
Oops. And then you have the content of the page. So this is basically what you call the skeleton. Right? Um, and you'll see what goes into the body and you'll see what goes into the head in a little bit. I'll show you some examples, okay? But just remember these different points, uh, different sections that you need to have. Uh, you can call it a skeleton, you can call it a template or whatever, um, but these are the things that you need to have, okay? So here, we're in the head section here. Uh, I talked a bit uh, about what the UTF-8 means in terms of the character set. This is the title here. This doesn't necessarily mean that you're displaying um, the title. Um, you know, you uh, you have it up here, um, but it's uh, this type of information is really helpful for the for the browser. And you'll see that we'll put like metadata uh, type of stuff into this area too. Um, so. Let me move on to the next section. You see the body section here. And this is really where the main content is. So whatever you put in here is what's going to be displayed on the page. Okay? Um, exactly as you see here, right? You can see the main content of the page goes here and goes here, right? And I'll show you an example of that in a second. Okay? Uh, so just keep in mind, anything you really want to display on the page, um, this is where it goes, right? And there'll be different formatting and whatnot. This is kind of the meat of what we're going to be doing with HTML. Um, going back to here, I consider this stuff here up here is more for helping uh, search engines uh, and just kind of setting up the overall page. Um, the body section to me is the important section where you actually put the content of what's going to be displayed on the page. So these tags, structure and format, you see all these different things here. Again, you don't need to worry about memorizing them. We'll have them in the reference sheet. Uh, just understand like what they're going to be doing. So you can see over here, um, you know, it puts it between the tags. Uh, in this case, we're talking about bold, right? Bold, and uh, what it what it looks like. And this is something that I would suggest for all of you. Once I show you the HTML editor, for you to try this, you can just uh, type it in very quickly and you can see how it gets represented on the right hand side so you can see for yourself how these things work um, so it's pretty self-explanatory just put all these different tags out there and then put uh, whatever string or text uh, in between them uh, and then out comes the other side uh, the formatted uh, string or text okay uh, so you can try all of these uh, and again, I'm going to show you an HTML editor in a second. It will become a little bit more clear when I show it to you on the, on the editor. Um, There's another important uh, concept or, or just a, a, a note. So not all tags have to have a pair. Okay, so there's a couple that uh, don't. Uh, so they refer to a singleton tags. And there's some examples here. Okay, so HR, uh, you make a horizontal line. Okay. This is like a line break, BR, right? So you just uh, do a break here, almost like a, a break on your Word document, let's say. Uh, and then meta, right? Uh, this is something that uh, in practice, when you're actually uh, working with uh, with a page, uh, this is actually pretty important. Um, so when you look at meta, you want to make sure you provide things that help the search engines to find your page. Uh, very few times you're going to be creating a web page that you don't want people to see, right? So most of the time, uh, you do want to have a, a web page that uh, is uh, identifiable to people who who care about your content. So you're trying to reach a certain audience. Um, so this is where it's important to sort out like what type of uh, metadata you want to put here, so that uh, from a search engine optimization standpoint, um, they'll be able to find your page. Okay. Um, so here, this basically just goes through like the different types of headings, uh, and I think this sums it up here. Uh, so headings are bold, and then they get less strong as the as the number gets bigger. So you can see that right, H1, H2, uh, and it goes all the way down to six. Okay. Uh, white space. I think the main thing to remember uh, to remember here is that you can put all kinds of white space in there, but when the when the browser uh, picks it up and renders it, uh, it's not going to recognize all of that white space. 
Uh, so uh, here it says it uh, HTML ignores the white space. Okay, um, so uh, you're gonna have to do formatting um, and basically explicitly saying you want this white space out there. Um, you know, you have to be careful with it. Uh, you think about it when you represent a browser, you can resize it. Uh, it could be on a mobile phone or whatever. Uh, so you want to be able to have <coughs> um, the browser uh, be able to uh, adjust uh, your display as best as possible. And I think a lot of the more current tooling um, allows you to uh, represent visually um, the, the best way to, to show uh, your page. So if you go in there and you try to force uh, space uh, and whatnot, it's, it, things are going to get cut off when you do resizing, uh, depending on like how you, uh, which, which type of screen you're using and, and whatnot. So it's kind of best to allow the browser to be able to resize and move the text around as appropriate. Um, let me see here. Okay, um, so this is just uh, showing the concept where we just talked about how the white space is not really there. I can have the white space here, and then you can see down here, um, it just smushes everything together, it pulls everything together, right? It doesn't care uh, that you put like all kinds of white space here. You put the white space here, in some cases, it's more just so that uh, you can, uh, you as a person who's looking at this can understand this better. But when it actually shows up on the browser here, you can see all the space is gone. But if you if we show this on the browser, as I kind of move it back and forth, you'll kind of see all this text like adjusting around it, wrapping around and stuff like that. Again, it kind of depends on how you how you set this up, but in this case, that's what it would do. So this point where it talks about a uh, web page and you know how you can have an editor and then you can have a browser so uh, in this case it's talking about notepad plus plus this is something that if you're running on a PC you would have something like this which is fine um, so you can see these browsers has some nice little things to kind of you know color it show you that uh, which you see these open brackets and whatnot see how these things um, kind of group together. So it helps you pick up things if you make a mistake a little bit better. Um, so you can choose to use that. I'm going to show you the editor in a second on my side. And so they're talking about you know, how you can have this editor here to change whatever HTML uh, and then you can paste it into a browser and see it there. And I'll show you in a second on, on mine how we can have the two things next to each other. Now you have things like this, uh, these, are, these are a good reference. Uh, this is helps to help you to validate code. So if you punch something in and you don't remember like the, uh, the syntax or the tag, uh, or maybe you're just checking, you might've made a, made a typo or something like that. Um, you can use these type of things to help you uh, to figure out whether you're using something valid or not. And you know, I think for this class, again, we're trying to keep it simple. Uh, so it shouldn't be too bad for you to uh, look pretty quickly, understand whether you missed something. So here, this uh, kind of recaps what we've just discussed. Uh, you remember up here, uh, these are required tags up here. Uh, these are other additional tags, and these are in your reference sheet that I mentioned earlier on. You have more tags here. And this is where I was saying, essentially, uh, this is like a skeleton. So almost every time we ask you to come over to a new page, uh, you would just start off with this. Right? So probably what I would do is I would just take this from your reference or you know, scratch pad, whatever notes that you've had, uh, and just copy and paste this. Most times, like in, in our class, when we provide you something, we'll start you off with this so you don't have to type this over and over again. Okay, but this is here in case you ever find a situation where you don't have that handy. Uh, just take it, copy and paste it. Okay. Uh, so here's some example code. I kind of popped this into the browser in my last lecture. And then this is attributes. Okay. 
uh, so what what is meant by that, right? So one of them, you remember meta was your uh, singleton, uh, and then you have these attributes here, which we we're saying is the car set uh, equals to UTF-8, okay? Um, we'll have uh, some reference you can break down some of the attributes uh, for the for the base uh, tags. So let me go over to here. I think I already pasted it into the browser. So here's HTML5 editor. Yeah, I already have something in here, but let me go back to here and paste it back in again. So I'm gonna copy this. Blank this out, replace it. Okay. So what we were saying about editor and then the browser on the right. This kind of lays it out here, right? Um, so you have all of this here, and then you can see here, here's the body, and here's this. Uh, maybe it might help if I make this bigger. So let me, uh, let me increase the zoom on this guy. All right, here we go. All right, so all of this stuff, you know, pretty standard. Let's work with here. Okay, so one thing I want to mention, I think last time I was kind of mentioning this where I can make a change here. Say I take this and I make it bold. And then you can see on the left hand side, it actually changed this. Okay, now this is something we have to be careful with. You can see it became strong, right? Actually, I didn't realize this. I was kind of assuming when I made something bold uh, that it should just be B. There's nothing wrong uh, with using strong per se, but going back to the original point uh, when I kicked off this recording is um, this is something that we're not necessarily teaching in class. This is kind of like extra type of thing. Um, so you really, it should be B. For bold. Right, that's kind of what we're teaching in class, and you can see on the right hand side it's the same thing, right? It hasn't changed. Um, so if I go over to here, it's very quickly uh, the difference between strong and bold. Essentially, it's the same thing from your standpoint. Um, so it just strong is just something, as it says, uh, semantically emphasizes uh, the text as important, right? Um, so for your purpose it kind of doesn't matter um, and like I said from a class standpoint this is not something that we're we're teaching so I would hold off on using something like strong and just stick with something like B for bold okay and uh, so I find this kind of useful to be able to change the uh, stuff on the right hand side the browser side what you're gonna see in the browser uh, and what you see in the editor uh, but of course you can change it from the editor side uh, and see it come over onto the browser side too. Okay, uh, So I would suggest you go into here, put in whatever text you want. Right? Um, you know, let me go in here. Look, I'll change this to 6. Um, okay, And you can see still bold, but it came quote unquote less strong. Okay, um, Let me change it back up. Right, and here you go. Um, so, you know, play around with this. Try. I would just suggest going through all of the different tags. Now let me go back to here, okay, back on the resources, and the reference sheet is the one that we're working off of right now. The GUI one we'll work with uh, a little bit later. All right, you see all of these guys here. Again, basic HTML structure, so you have this, and then you have all these tags here. I would just say try all of, the, try all of these tags. Right? It's not that hard. Um, don't worry about the tables yet. We're going to teach the tables in a later lecture uh, and lists also. So all you have to do is do this, these things right here. All right, so just try all of these. Uh, you remember what I said about singleton, right? So here's the BR, uh, HR. All right, so just try all of these. Um, 
there's a couple couple of them that's not on here but for the exam you can be sure we'll definitely have a fuller set uh, if you remember um, we had like underline and stuff like that if I go back to here to the PowerPoint yeah so you see we had this oh okay these are under lists right uh, so unordered list ordered list we definitely should have that on the reference so let me go back to here for a second that mouse is a little flaky list oh here we go <clears throat> yeah ordered list under ordered list um, so I haven't had a chance to reconcile on the on a PowerPoint uh, but I think it should if there's anything missing I'll make sure it gets on here um, but yeah work with this play around with it put in different strings characters do all of the different headings uh, one through six uh, and you should be able to get a good idea of how to uh, put together a basic HTML we'll go over metadata and some other stuff the tables and whatnot in another lecture okay all right thank you for your time today and look forward to some uh, some more follow-up uh, lectures